Ow, that's my hand. You bite too hard. I feel pretty good in introducing her to our senior dog, Indiana Jones. I'm Zach George, I'm a dog trainer. Meet my new project, Kona. I've got just three weeks to train her and set her up for the most well-behaved life possible. That means I need to work on the most common puppy issues like potty training, how to actually pay attention, stopping things like play biting, chewing, separation anxiety, getting along with other animals, leash walking, and teaching her everything a good dog needs to know. Real dog training doesn't always go smoothly, and that's why I'm going to show you every success and mistake and how I work through all of the most challenging parts of raising a new puppy. Welcome to your new puppy survival guide. Good morning, guys. It's the beginning of day two. Hey, I mean, day one was good. It had its ups and downs, but I can see we've got a lot to do. Day two is underway. Let's see what we can do today. Kona's getting braver for sure, slowly but surely. And for those of you who have been following along with Inertia series, Dog Training Experience, you'll know that we did pretty extensive socializing with other dogs and that seems to have paid off. Before we can do too much training today, I think I'd like to get the two dogs playing together, maybe get some of their energy out, have some free play. It's important to do a lot of this when you're training a puppy. If you're just strict all the time, training isn't going to be as enjoyable. For those of you that have a puppy, Pup Box is an awesome product because they send you training supplies, treats, and toys based on your dog's specific age. So Kona is three months old. This is the three month box. Let's see what we got here. One of the things that really makes Pup Box different is you have this training guide and it's very detailed because it's front and back and it really zeroes in on some of the most important things that you need to focus on for your dog at three months old in this case. I've actually seen this toy before. I can't believe they put this in the three month box. And you can see how a toy like this has her attention immediately. You need things like this to engage your dog and better to play with a toy like this than your couch cushion, for example, right? Kona loves this toy, even though it's three times her size. So we found the thing that makes Kona brave. It's Fred the Flamingo. What's cool about this toy in all seriousness is that you have a really nice tug texture here. You can see how she just gravitates to that. Plus for a teething dog, you want plenty of things for them to be able to play with. This is a classic thing for puppies too. When they're bored, I probably could have used this last night while she was crying, but you can put stuff like peanut butter in this Kong in the bottom right there, you can see. By the way, this peanut butter is specifically for dogs, which is nice. You get a cool pup box treat pouch, some really good training treats. How about we keep all four feet on the ground? Good girl. There we go. And of course, we get a, another really awesome chew here. This is going to have a real dynamic texture as well. All of you can get 50% off of your first Pup Box when you sign up for a multi-month subscription. Just go to pupbox.com slash Zach and her discount code Zach. I'll have the information in the description. I'm gonna take her lead off right now since we're in a controlled environment. Look at her. I've got another toy. This also came from a Pup Box, by the way. Good squeaker. Good, nice, tough toy. Something that's kind of fun that will also have an added benefit to her training is refining her fetch game. Fetch is where you throw a toy, your dog runs after it, picks it up, brings it back to you, ideally in a straight line, lets go promptly and eagerly awaits the next throw. Fetch is great because it gives a dog an outlet in working with a human being, it gets a lot of energy out, and it can make your overall training, including puppy biting, unwanted jumping, and general hyperactivity, a lot smoother and a lot easier. This may not be intuitive to you, but the first step to teaching a good fetch is exactly what we're doing here, generating interest in a toy and getting a good tug of war. And this is a superior tug of war for a 12-week-old dog. She, I mean, she really has a good grip on that. The more intense that tug is, the better. You might recall we were working on let go. Let's see how that's doing. I'm just gonna make the toy boring and see what happens here. Yes, good. And then immediately when she lets go, I'm gonna bring the toy back to life. All you do to teach a dog to let go is simply make the toy boring, keep it where it's not easy to move. See how I'm doing my best to not let my hands move at all here? Yes, you can see the light bulb go off. And then when she does let go, I'm not just gonna throw it and make it boring. I wanna bring it back to life because this is what dogs like. They like when you engage them with a tug of war. It's not as fun to them when you do this. And this is how we teach them to let go. Oh no. Yes, good. Even a distraction kind of worked there. So there's more than one way to get the job done too. A lot of people really try to bypass this step when teaching fetch. Remember, tug of war is the first step because this drives their interest in the toy. And the more interested they are in the toy, the more likely they are to chase it endlessly. I mean, look, that is a dog who is very interested in this toy. So I think we're ready for our first toss. I'm gonna to keep it short though because it's more important to me to get the fundamentals down right now 
of her chasing after the toy and then bringing it back and hopefully letting go than it is to just launch it as far as I can. Because with a dog who's new to fetch, they can get distracted along the way. Okay, go get it. Good job. And so right as she picks it up, look at that. I'm just gonna run away from her. Puppies especially, most dogs anyway, enjoy chasing you if you run away from them. So that's kind of the general way that we're gonna rely on teaching her to bring it back. Maybe clap your hands if your dog likes that. Good job, good. Play tug when they get back to really keep the game extra exciting rather than arguing with them over dropping it. Yes, look at that. Let's see what happens. Come on, yeah, good girl. Good job, good. Arr. Yes, ready? Uh, look, look how she's anticipating it. You see that? She's acting like a border collie. Go. We're gonna run after that. Wow, yeah. Since she's doing so well, I'm tossing it a little bit farther here. I'm not even having to run away from her. So far, she's really coming back pretty reliably here. Some dogs will take to playing fetch like this more than others. Don't be discouraged if your dog doesn't do this well, or if they do even better, be excited about that. You wanna be very conservative with a 12 week old dog on playing fetch. So you wouldn't wanna do this more than a few minutes at a time, two or three times a day. I tell you what, since she's doing so well, let's teach her to come around. There we go, good. So right there, you could, I mean, it was as easy as that. Kona, come. Come on, come on. Good girl. And I like so far how she's not playing keep away. A lot of dogs will do that. If your dog is playing keep away, just put him back on lead. That way you'll be in a position to prevent that behavior from getting more established. We do the come around in order just to teach our dog to run straight out rather than facing us and doing that awkward twist as they run. So I like teaching a dog to do that when playing fetch. It's easy enough and it looks a little flashy too. Good, look at that. You can see we're getting a lot of energy out of this young lady. Good. Yeah, good. Now another thing you can do is you can use the two toy method in order to encourage your dog to come back. We're trying to get the come around. Here we go. Go. <laughs> get Fred the Flamingo. There's no harm in that, but I do definitely like to make sure a dog understands the concept of let go even when there's only one toy. That was a really good fetch. Go. You might notice I'm not saying things like come around or anything like that. She doesn't really understand the concept yet. Good job, girl. And I think we'll give her a break right there. Nice job. Good way to start off the day. Look at this. Do you see this? Ouch. Look at that. Seriously. Look at those teeth marks. Oh my gosh. You bite too hard. Ow. That's my hand. So she definitely needs to work on her aim. That's something we, you'll want to be careful with with any dog learning tug of war. It's important to remember all dogs were created to work in harmony with human beings, but very few of us use our dogs for their original purpose, like hunting or herding. So fetch really gives them that outlet. And I think that's an important thing about it. And that's why you should prioritize teaching it. It's also a pretty easy game for most dogs to pick up. I'll also say there are some dogs who really aren't that interested in fetch. Still give it a really good effort over the first year of training to really see if you can ignite their interest. But it is true that at the end of the day, some dogs just may not be as interested in playing fetch and that's okay too settle there we go this is another benefit to teaching your dog fetch here i mean you see how she just went into that nice natural settle settle or relax as we talked about earlier pretty much the same thing are taught contextually more than in dedicated training sessions so here she'll learn the concept of settle over time if we tell her settle as she naturally goes into that relaxed lie down position where her mindset is such that she's going to zone out and maybe she'll decide to sleep now so let's talk about potty training for a little bit remember that Dogs aren't born knowing where it's okay to do their business versus where it's not okay. This is very much a human thing that we have to teach them. Extra patience is required when you're potty training a new dog. The best way to set yourself up for success with potty training is to make sure that you are a master at controlling the environment. And part of managing your dog's environment is being really good at supervising them. Now I can tell you this from experience. Most people think they're pretty good at supervising their dog. After all, it is a lot easier 
easier to supervise a 10 to 12 week old puppy than it is say a 14 to 18 week old puppy. That's because they tend to get smarter and probably more importantly, they tend to get a lot faster and sneakier and get away from you the older that they get. But this catches a lot of people off guard. So that's why you're going to see Kona on leash much of the time. This is a 10 foot lead so that she has room to roam. And if I'm really supervising her and I know every move that she's making, I'll take her off lead. For example, when we're letting her play with inertia. If you're really good at supervising your dog, you'll see those accidents coming before they happen. Uh, and you'll also probably be reminded that it's important to take them out every 30 minutes to an hour or so for a young puppy. That's when you're at home. Obviously, most puppies can make it overnight at a certain age. But as you saw with Kona last night, I had to let her out a few times. Remember though, dogs don't have accidents in the house out of spite. They just have to go potty. Think of it like this though. The overall goal when you're potty training a dog is to teach them that your house is their house. See, a dog might reason, for example, that okay, we spend most of our time here in the living room, but if I really have to go, maybe I could sneak upstairs into the guest room and go potty up there. After all, I never really spend any time there. It seems that dogs instinctively don't like to go potty in a space that they view as their home. So you have to slowly show them that the whole house is their house. That's why we start off really small. You can see that we have this setup over here. We have a crate and an exercise pen kind of combined together here in order to get her potty trained in this area first. The idea is that she doesn't go potty over here. We have a potty pad out there just because she's still learning potty training. So if she does go, it's damage control. But ideally, I don't ever want her going in here. I prefer her to go exclusively outside or on a pad if I put it out specifically for that reason. So right now, Kona is learning that this little piece of the house is where she can view as her primary home. And once she makes that connection, it's unlikely that she'll have accidents in here unless she really has to go. But it's my job to make sure that she doesn't get to that point. Then over time, we're gonna show her that this whole bottom level of our house is a place that she can view as her home. And hopefully she'll have minimal accidents. One of the most common mistakes that people make is their dog is doing good in the crate or the exercise pen area, and then they just let them out and assume everything is done. That's a big leap. You wanna keep the steps smaller than that. So if Kona was my own dog, for example, after she was comfortable with being down here and not having accidents, I would slowly begin to introduce her to our master bedroom, for example. But I certainly wouldn't let her have access to the whole house right away. In other words, I would take several months to introduce her to a house like this. I'm sure we'll encounter more examples of potty training as we move on in this series, but the bottom line is control your dog's environment, supervise them when they aren't in a tightly controlled environment, and take them out very often. That is the recipe for potty training any dog. You might remember yesterday we introduced Inertia and Kona, and they've been doing pretty well. I feel pretty good in introducing her to our senior dog, Indiana Jones, right now. Indy isn't the type of dog that always wants to play with an energetic puppy, but she's very tolerant, and I think it's gonna be a great experience for Kona to meet a new adult dog. I'm gonna take her off leash. Hey, what's up, good girl? You see Kona? You can see. <laughs> you can see Indy's like, okay, another dog, whatever. She's met many a dog in her life, so <laughs> it's just a little excited. She's like, I know, that's a puppy. It's just kind of hilarious to see how Indiana doesn't care anything about Kona at all. She's like, whatever. Yeah. Kona's doing well, though. Indy's the kind of dog who will just let Kona check her out. This is exactly what we need, actually. This hopefully will give Kona more confidence when encountering other dogs, and she's at such an impressionable age that these positive experiences like this really go a long way for young dogs in particular. You wanna play with the puppy? You're being sweet to the puppy, aren't you? Hey. So I'd say this is a pretty successful first meeting for both of these guys. And even though they're not doing too much together here, I mean, remember, socialization isn't just about dogs playing together. It's about them learning overall social skills with other dogs, too. So it's a great reminder to Kona that, hey, not every dog you meet is going to result in a rambunctious play session either. You might notice here how we have introduced Kona to both Inertia and Indy, but we've done so separately. Just to be extra thorough and not overwhelm Kona, it wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing to introduce them at the same time, but I generally like to introduce dogs to new dogs one at a time as I'm getting to know them. Finally, a dog that likes me more than Bree so far. So far. That'll change, but. Hey, I know, she comes to me all the time. 
Hello. Oh my goodness. Oh man, so what about puppy biting? Oh geez. Kona isn't the worst puppy biter I've ever seen, but she is not the most gentle puppy biter I've ever seen either. She's like kind of right in the middle. One of my game plans with puppy biting when she does get in that playful mood and starts biting my flesh or clothes or whatever is to redirect her attention onto a toy that she really likes. Biting us isn't always as bad as it sounds. It's also important that our dogs learn to bite with the appropriate force. In other words, very gently. So yes, easy, good. Good, that's gentle, very good. So there's a nice gentle bite. I don't mind the mouthing so much. It's important for her to learn that. And then if she wants to bite hard, I can be like, get this, you can bite hard on this to give her that outlet. As we discussed earlier, that can be very satisfying for a dog to bite hard on something and play tug. So in other words, you're teaching them, look, if you bite hard on me, that's no good but you can bite hard on this. And you gotta be very consistent because they're teething, they're still learning what's okay to bite and what's not. Indy's looking a little more playful now. Puppy biting is one of those things that feels like it can just take forever and ever to get under control. But honestly, it's just a few weeks that you have to be really tolerant. Another thing you can do if you don't have a toy or you're not in the mood to play with your dog for whatever reason, you can always pull out a treat, you know, and give them something to do. I haven't really worked with Kona on sit yet. Let me see if I can lure her into a sit. And we'll talk more about this later, but very good. Good job, girl. And so now you can see she's, well, there's still a little biting. I thought she was going to lick, but it's a much softer bite. In other words, when you give a dog a treat, they kind of go into food mode. And by nature, they tend to bite softer, which is good. That's not the reason we're doing a treat. Well, the reason we're offering a treat in exchange for a skill like sit is to get her mind off of the rambunctious playing and more onto, hey, listen to my direction instead. Kona! Kona! Good! I love how she's responding to her name. We'll go into more depth on Cumblin called later on. One thing at a time, it's so tempting to just teach everything at one time, but you don't want to overwhelm your puppy or your dog training students either. It's time for bed, and yes, I'm taking you guys along with me. Night one was pretty tough. Hopefully night two will be a little bit smoother for Kona. Okay, I think we're gonna try something a little bit different tonight. I'm going to attempt to have her in the crate because I noticed that she's been sleeping in the crate without the extended area a lot more willingly today. I feel like she's a lot more adjusted now, so we're gonna see how she does in the crate tonight, night two. All right, ready? I'm gonna give her a few treats. By the way, check her out. I mean, look, she's being pretty good. Yeah, this is her first time in the crate, so I'm hopeful that this is going to reduce the odds of an accident by having her be in a slightly smaller area. And hopefully her separation anxiety won't be so bad because I'm going to be sleeping down here again just to make sure she does well. Hopefully she'll do a lot better. Okay. A little anxious. Look at that. She will probably be a little vocal. Let's see, right now it's 8.27. We'll see how long she goes before she acts up again. Well, it's been quite a while now. She's doing pretty amazing. Much, much better than last night so far, though I don't want to jinx it. I still have a whole night to get through. All right, so 9.45 p.m. We just had another brief outburst. It looks like she's quickly settled down. What's great is if we can get her comfortable with the crate, it's a puppy-proofed area, and uh, it's a place that she can feel safe. Most dogs come to really like their crate and prefer to be in it. Relax. What a good girl. This is a dramatic improvement from last night. It's not perfect, but at this rate, we'll be there in no time. But I imagine we'll hit a plateau at some point. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I just took her out. Just one last time to make extra sure. She was being good. Let her have some water one more time. Okay, it's uh, 10.30 now, almost 11 o'clock. 
and she's sound asleep. <laughs> so it's uh, 2.27 a.m. <laughs> I just got done letting her out. Uh, she peed, she had some water. We're gonna see if she'll go back to sleep. <sighs> and me too. Much better night so far though. All right, she's calming down and relaxing. <laughs> I wonder what she's thinking right now. All right, it is morning. And she made it just the one break, much better. So I'm gonna let her out right now. Good job, girl. The separation anxiety is improving. We'll see what we can do. Let's keep going. It looks like Kona is ready for her first nap of the day. I think we're doing pretty good on keeping her satisfied. So that's pretty awesome. I thought this would be a pretty good opportunity to go over some of the core puppy supplies or dog supplies you need for a new dog. Now, of course, you can get more than what we're gonna cover today, but these are the things that I think are really important that every dog really needs to have. I mean, naturally, you need things like food and water bowls, so I won't spend too much time on that. I kind of like metal bowls like this uh, and really durable plastic bowls that are very easy to clean. I mean, they just last forever. It's a good idea to go a little above and beyond, I think, for your food and water bowls. I've had these at least 10 years and they still look brand new, so I like these a lot. And this is in no particular order, and we're gonna talk more about like toothbrushing and grooming, but some grooming supplies you need, obviously. Dog toothpaste, which is different than human toothpaste a dog toothbrush, a nail clipper or a Dremel. We tend to use a Dremel most of the time, so that's your decision, but something to keep their nails reasonably short. It takes a little more time to introduce a Dremel like this, but it's a little more comfortable for dogs, even though it takes a little bit of time to introduce. So, you know, if it's within your budget, I'd recommend you get one of those. Poop bags are important. I usually will just put three or four of these in my pocket when I wake up every day, so I have them, like never leave the house without poop bags if you've got a puppy. As far as leashes go, I generally recommend you have a variety of leashes. I guess if you had to get one leash, a 10 foot is probably a good option because it gives you a lot of options. I've been using that for these first couple of days. It's a really good compromise between giving a dog some freedom while also having tight control. And you can also always shorten it by grabbing it. But in general, I would say it's a good idea to have a six foot leash, a 10 foot leash, a 20 foot lead and a 50 foot lead. This is a 50 foot one here. I mean, if you're really trying to go all out and have as many options as possible, this is biothane too. And we've just recently switched to these. I love it. I like this a lot more than the fabric. It's a real like kind of plasticky feeling, but it cleans up so easily. The other ones get gross pretty quick. So I found myself going through them a lot. It's also safer for leash burns as well. So really great tool. Back to grooming, of course, you know, having a brush like this is good. I like these to introduce brushing to instead of a slicker brush, but I'm not a professional groomer. So there may be some advantages to different types of brushes. And a dog like Kona is definitely gonna need a lot of grooming in her life. Carabiners are a really nice dog training hack because you can put them on the end of any leash, really, and then clip them to you or clip them to something else. I like having that redundancy. You never know, a leash could slip out of your hand. Some extreme event could happen that catches you off guard. So having this like clip to your belt is a really good way to have that extra safety measure in place. I mean, these are like two bucks each and they give you incredible peace of mind. So it's nice having these carabiners. Having treats with you every waking hour of the day is very important when you're training a new dog. I mean, you can see I have them right here. So I'm always ready to jump into a training session if I need to, or if I need to get Kona to go into the crate voluntarily, I can just reach in, throw a treat in there, have her follow it in. So a good treat pouch is a good idea. This one came with our pup box, which is cool. Classic rope toy. This one has some wear on it right here, but you know, it's still in good shape. Getting a few good quality rope toys is good. This is not a chew toy. I would keep this away from your dog unless you're directly playing tug of war or fetch with it. This can be like a $50 bill to a dog, like a five second game of tug. They'll like do anything for that. So you can really use it as a reward in many cases. Uh, as well as a ball. Dogs love tennis balls, and I really like these squeaky tennis balls. Those are cool. It's an extra way to get their attention onto the ball. 
having a variety of things for your dog to chew on is really important and having things with different textures is also going to be advantageous sometimes they want something more firm other times they want something more soft it really depends on their mood when they're teething of course you're going to need a collar with an id tag on it that is the primary function of a collar is to carry their id tags or their rabies tags when i'm really engaged in training a dog i prefer to use a harness to actually manage them so that i don't have tension around their neck and i can really focus on just kind of keeping them stable without having any unwanted side effects. Puppies can be crazy and not so bright sometimes, so they could potentially injure themselves just by being erratic. I've been really enjoying the Blue Nine Balance Harnesses. I like that they give you a nice broad range of motion for your dog. Having some type of way to contain your dog and manage them like we've been discussing and will continue to discuss is, is really important. So you see we've got the crate and playpen area over here because it's impossible to focus on a dog 24 hours a day. So making sure they have a really solid puppy proofed area to exist in when you can't tend to them is vital. And speaking of puppy proofing, you know, having gates throughout the house or anything else that you need to in order to keep them in a particular area. Here, for example, upstairs is off limits for Kona. So we have the gate right here. And of course, one really great way to make sure you have lots of great monthly training supplies is to get a pup box because they really do send you those supplies based on your dog specific age, along with age appropriate training advice too, like we talked about. I'm going to have a link in the description where you can get 50% off of your first pup box when you sign up for a multi-month subscription. Go to pupbox.com slash Zach and use the discount code Zach. And as usual, subscribe to my channel, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Those links will be below. And check out my book too if you really like having that written guide to everything possible in dog training. We'll see you in the next video where hopefully Kona will be ready to do some serious training. See you next time.